I want to start out with a question, though. How many people here, this is your first ever Maker Faire? This is your first experience with it? Wow, so about half. Um, so that was me, I think, three years ago. I had never been to a Maker Faire. I didn't know what this whole thing was about. A friend had told me, you know, you, you should really go and check out this thing called Maker Faire. I said, what is that? What's Maker Faire? And they said, just go and check it out. And so I showed up, and I was in the stands just like this watching um, a couple of talks. And it, it just blew me away. Um, the whole experience was totally eye-opening for me. I saw all these people and all these amazing projects, but the thing that stuck out the most was the passion. You know, all these people, and you'll see this today, uh, are so excited about what they're doing and what they're building. Um, and so after that point, I thought, you know what? I want to get involved. This is something I want, to, I want to do. And luckily, I got really lucky, a friend, a mutual friend introduced me to this guy, Eric Stackpole. And Eric has since become one of my great friends, but when we first met, he told me this wonderful story about this cave in Northern California that he really wanted to explore. It was an underwater cave that no one had been to the bottom of in the Trinity Alps. And he had this story of gold, and he was really enthusiastic about it. He had all these hand motions and characters. And I was just totally blown away. And then he told me that he was building an underwater robot in his garage to try and go and explore this underwater cave. And I thought, you know, this is something that I want to be a part of. And that was some, sometime in 2011. So, I mean, really, really not that long ago. I mean, just two years ago when Eric and I first met. And I convinced him, luckily, I said, Eric, you got to let me tag along. I'll help you. I'll build a website, um, whatever I can do to, to tag along. And at that point, the robot that he had was, a, was basically just a, a shell. It didn't work. And I certainly didn't have any technical experience. I studied business in college and it, it had no technical experience to speak of. But we, we were lucky in that respect that we didn't know what we were doing because it forced us to ask people for help. And so we started asking the internet for help. We put up this site, openrov.com, and started, you know, created a forum and started asking questions. We started asking questions about electronics, about um, ceiling and, and buoyancy and all these different things. And pretty soon, at first it was just Eric and I talking back to each other on the forums, me basically just asking him questions about you know, physics. And, uh, but pretty soon we started to accumulate um, you know, other people who were helping us. There were, some were professional ocean engineers, others were just amateurs, um, some were electrical engineers, some were just hobbyists. Um, and we, you know, it slowly started to build and build and build. And you know, about a year into it, we finally had this robot that we thought was good enough to go to this underwater cave. And um, so we did it. We planned this expedition to go to the Hall City Cave in Northern California. And as it turns out, um, that was a pretty big story, big enough to get covered in the New York Times. And so it all, basically overnight, we had you know, hundreds of people from around the world emailing us saying, hey, I want to build my own underwater robot. How do I do it? Um, and we had this just kind of surplus in demand for these robots. So we put the project on Kickstarter and we raised you know, $110,000 and then we had to ship, we had to make all these robots and ship them around the world, which was pretty daunting for two guys um, in a garage. But we, uh, we managed to figure it out. It took us a few months to actually figure out how to make this. Thanks a lot to um, this place called Tech Shop in San Francisco who really not only supported us as we prototyped this um, robot, but they helped us kind of learn our way into being a micro manufacturer. So it was a really, it was a really whirlwind four months where we went, I, I went from zero to maker to actually manufacturer. Um, and now we've, you know, now we have a small business and we're shipping these robots all around the world. We have a community of thousands of people who are like us. They're just people who are curious and um, excited about exploring underwater. You know, it doesn't, our, our mission is to really democratize exploration. That it shouldn't take a research grant to have to go out and, and see what's, you know, beneath the surface. You know, it should just take curiosity. And so now we have this wonderful community of people around the world who are kind of sharing that experience with us. And it's a small business. It's what I do all the time. And we're just having so much fun. And so for me, it's been a really enlightening process. And I've called this whole thing the zero to maker journey. Because when I started, 
I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know what an Arduino was. I didn't know how 3D printing worked. I'd heard the word, but I had no clue. Um, and so I was really honest about that. I said, you know what, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I started blogging for Make under this column heading, Zero to Maker. And I, you know, at first I just started with welding classes and woodworking, um, but then I slowly got into these digital fabrication tools like 3D printing and laser, laser cutting. Um, and eventually, you know, now I have these underwater robots and I'm doing all these different things. But, uh, I, you know, looking back at that process, you know, how I've been able to do that in, you know, less than, less than two years, there was, some, there was some lessons that I learned that I think are really valuable for new makers, especially if this is your first time, that this place can be really intimidating, right? There's so many people doing so many things, it's kind of hard to know where to find your place and what, um, you know, what kind of project to really sink your teeth into. So um, the, the big lessons that I like to talk about, the first one was um, this is not about DIY. You know, that's a, that's a big thing that a lot of people say is this is a DIY movement. That is, that couldn't be further from the truth. So what I found is that this whole process um, is about doing things together and, and sharing your designs online and showing up at makerspaces. You guys have um, some wonderful makerspaces here in Kansas City, the Kansas City Hackerspace and Hammerspace. Um, these places are really accessible. I mean, you can go there and, and take classes and learn how to use a 3D printer, learn about laser cutting, learn about you know, some of these digital fabrication tools. And um, there are people who are there to help. You know, we, we have this community of thousands of amateur ocean explorers, and there's no way we could have done what we've done without them. And, and frankly, that's really the most fulfilling part. So that was the, big, the first big lesson, is this is not about DIY. This is about doing things together. And the, and the best makers I know are actually the people who are the most connected and know who to ask for help. Um, so that was the bi first big lesson. The second big lesson was really around these tools. Um, so when I first heard these terms, 3D printing, CNC machining, it seemed like something I would need a four-year degree to understand be a mechanical engineer, be an industrial designer. Uh, that's not true at all. Um, these digital fabrication tools are evolving so quickly. I mean, there, you, you'll walk around today, you'll see some of these 3D printers. Um, but if you go into a tech shop or you go into a hammer space, they have, they have a laser cutter, these things are actually really easy to use. Uh, you know, like basically you're just designing something in Adobe Illustrator and pressing print and it'll cut out. So I have one of our underwater robots here. And you can see, I mean, it's not that complicated. It's a fairly small device. But all this stuff, is, it's laser cut acrylic. So we just press print. And you can download the plans off our site. You can go on our site and download the plans for this and click print. And it'll cut out all these different plastic parts. Um, so you can go really, really far with this stuff. I mean, it's not just like the toys that you might, you might think, oh, that's cute. It's not. This, this is a real, you know, we have scientists who are buying these ROVs and thinking, you know, this is a much more modular approach. It's a much more low-cost approach, and I can fix, you know, my device in the field. You know, these are real tools, and you'll find that with the Arduino as well, the microcontroller. Um, that was something I thought was really intimidating when I was getting started. I'm not a, I hadn't been a uh, programmer, and I thought that was really intimidating. But it's very approachable, and you'd be really surprised at how far you can go with just a little bit of knowledge. And that was the last thing that I learned was that you only have to learn enough to be dangerous. You don't have to learn everything. You know, I went to school and I had this, you know, they, you know, you have to study the whole textbook, attend all the lectures, just in case there's going to be a question on the test. But that's not what, it's almost the exact opposite of what's happening at, in this maker world, is you just have to learn that something's possible and then you have to kind of navigate and ask questions in order to get there. So this enough to be dangerous idea of learning was another, um, was another important thing for me. Um, and so I don't know if anyone's wondering, but we, we didn't end up finding any treasure in the cave. Um, but we did, you know, we, we talk about it that we were able to find this treasure, which is this community of people that we're sharing in this wonderful experience. And now we have a business and it's just, we're just having a lot of fun. And I really do wish that for a lot of people. I think I learned a lot of lessons and I am writing this book, Zero to Maker, because I think I have kind of a lot of really good um, lessons that could be applicable for people who are just getting into this. 
And so now I put that book project on Kickstarter and raise $50,000, but that doesn't matter. The most important thing is there's 2,500 backers. So we have, I love this idea of 2,500 new projects coming into the world. Um, and I really do wish that for all of you, is that even if you don't know what you want to do today, that you just see that all of these people are really excited about what they're doing, they're really passionate, and that you can, you can have that too. And even if you don't find your right project right away, to, to hang around and to keep looking, because you never know, you might run into, like my friend Eric, and you might have this kind of shared idea that will inspire you and that you can really pour your heart into. And I think that's what we all want, is you know, work that's more meaningful and, and this idea of, of making, making the future. So I look forward to making the, the future with all of you. And if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them. So thank you. <laughs>